Hi, this is Dr. Diane Gayhart, and this is my lecture on trauma-focused CBT um, that accompanies my text, Theory and Treatment Planning in Counseling and Psychotherapy, uh, in the second edition. This, um, this chapter was an addition to the second um, edition. And you can buy the chapter by itself, and you can also find more free resources related to this in my other texts at MasteringCompetencies.com. So trauma-focused therapy in a nutshell. So trauma-focused therapy is a widely used evidence-based treatment for working with children who've experienced trauma. And it is a short-term strength-based approach and it is also an approach that uh, is adopted by many county and government agencies because it is readily available. Uh, there is a basic uh, free 10-hour online training that's really excellent and I have the website listed here and I highly encourage anyone in the field to um, to uh, take advantage of that. And it is an approach that uh, integrates uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, systemic therapy, humanism, as well as child development theory. And it is um, centered around um, the integration of the trauma narrative, and this is uh, consistent also with a lot of the uh, neurological um, research on uh, trauma in the brain. So it is a widely used approach with children. Um, there are the basic one is for trauma. There's also a traumatic grief um, comp uh, module almost that can be added to it. It is very structured. Um, Twelve, typically a twelve session model um, that works with both the caretaker parent as well as the child. So the juice, the significant contributions to the field. I think the most um, unique element of this approach and what it really highlights is the importance of reconstructing the trauma narrative in order to resolve trauma symptoms. And it's really the signature intervention and it's designed to unpair um, thoughts and memories of the trauma from overwhelming emotions. And so it's um, conceptualized really as a gradual exposure technique. And, uh, with, uh, and so it's uh, essentially a form of behavioral technique. And, and it's only introduced after there's a foundation in psychoeducation and how it, for, the, so for the kid to develop um, some coping skills, relaxation skills, some cognitive coping skills. So it's actually uh, the beginning of the treatment, um, and we'll see this in just a minute, focuses on developing kind of this coping skill foundation. And then the heart of the work, though, is working through this trauma narrative. And it is a process that you would begin um, by actually bringing in the parent uh, when you feel like the kid's ready to begin work on the trauma narrative and the child and you talk to them about the process that, um, that you will be constructing this narrative. Typically a picture book is created um, but then the format can depend on the child and the age and their abilities. Um, there certainly are um, kids who you know might use computers to generate this or other forms of art. Um, but some format for it, uh, typically though, a picture book um, with a narrative written, you know, kind of at the bottom along with pictures. And the child, of course, um, is the one who creates it. And so the therapist um, begins the work, and it will t typically take several sessions to work on this trauma narrative by talking about the day before what was going on, and then you have them begin um, telling the story of the trauma, whatever it was. and. And you'd kind of draw a picture, you know, or a page typically, I'm going to use that as the um, example here, a page, you know, with what's going on on each, um, for each step of whatever happened. And of course, some traumas, you know, take five minutes, other traumas may have lasted over five years. So, you know, you need to develop the book based on ever, however long the trauma was. Um, and then, uh, once you've kind of created your picture book in this case, you would have the child, if they're uh, developmentally able to, read through the narrative. And as they're reading, you know, they can add parts, change things out. This is allowed to be a fluid, flexible. But typically with trauma, um, because memory gets impaired, they'll, they might be adding pieces as they go along. And that's very, very normal. Uh, you do ask the child about the worst moment, and you include that with a picture of what was the worst moment. 
And so once you have kind of coalesced a pretty coherent narrative and the child feels like this is a fairly accurate representation of what happened, then you're going to go through and do some cognitive challenging. And so with each page, you might look at some of the um, beliefs or thoughts um, or and, um, difficult emotions and you uh, might challenge these using, you can use role play, you can use the cognitive triangle that we'll talk about, but you will use various things um, to look at and challenge some of the um, unhelpful cognitions that are uh, often developed in the experience of trauma. And uh, of course, through this, you use a lot of praise and encouragement. And in the end, this trauma narrative is shared with the parents. And so uh, this is how, you know, this is kind of the crux of uh, the approach um, in terms of working through the, the actual trauma itself. So now I want to move on and talk about um, the big picture, the overview of the process of therapy. And as an evidence-based treatment, it is a manualized treatment, so it is highly structured. So in terms of the length of treatment, um, it is typically a t uh, 12 weekly sessions that are 90 minutes long. It can also be done in 16 to 20 sessions that are 60 minutes long. In the 90 minute version, so about 45 minutes are spent with the, the non-offending parent or caregiver and another 45 minutes with the child and they will do conjoint uh, time as necessary in either part of that. And the 60 minute version, again, you would split the session half and half between each and bringing them together as needed. So the basic components or building blocks of the treatment, um, there's actual psychoeducation about the treatment itself, how it's gonna work. Um, they have introduced parenting skills, relaxation skills, effective expression and modulation. Um, there's a a coping, cognitive coping and processing, they do in two parts. They have the trauma narrative. They also talk about in vivo mastery um, in terms of, especially if there's any type of phobia um, responses, uh, they do conjoint parent-child sessions, and then there's also a component or module on enhancing future safety and development. So in terms of the session flow, in sessions one through four approximately, this, is, this uh, structure can certainly is um, tailored to the needs of the the client and the family. Um, but typically, um, sessions one through four is the psychoeducation of, um, about the approach as well as parenting skills, uh, teaching relaxation and stress management to the child, uh, working on effective expression and regulation, and then also um, developing cognitive coping skills. So that kind of sets up the foundation and the coping skills in order to move to um, kind of like the middle phase here is the trauma narrative development and processing, which we dis discussed in the juice. And then also any in, if in vivo uh, gradual exposure, if, again, if um, the trauma has uh, created certain um, phobias or hyper uh, sensitivities, uh, you would do the in vivo in this part after the trauma narrative's been worked through. And then in the end, you're doing more conjoint parent-child sessions and looking at ways to enhance future safety and, you know, enhance a normal child development. So it's very clear early, middle, late phase here goal in terms of the flow of sessions. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the therapeutic relationship, making connection. So in trauma-focused therapy, um, you're pretty much working with a traumatized child. And so the, there's a real heavy emphasis on having a, a very supportive, emotionally safe um, therapeutic relationship. And it's very important that the therapist is emotionally attuned to the child and, and follows that. And especially with trauma, emotions can shift suddenly, abruptly. Um, and so it's important that the therapist is, creates an, an, an exceptionally safe, stable, emotional environment for this work to happen. And then again, um, clinical judgment is, is very critical because with trauma, it's not a necessarily cookie cutter treatment every time. And so it's important that the therapist, you know, restructure the treatment, you know, components as needed, adapts them as needed to the child and the family um, 
to, in such a way that they're able to benefit from the approach. So it's not, even though, yes, there is a clear structure laid out, the therapist is responsible for, re, you know, for connecting with the parent and the child and being attuned enough to get a sense of how things may need to be adjusted for them to benefit from the treatment. So now we're going to talk a little bit about case conceptualization and trauma-focused CBT. So in terms of case conceptualization, uh, it's going to, obviously, you need to assess the trauma, the form of trauma, what happened, if there's a grief component to it, um, if it's complex trauma, which um, refers to more chronic and pervasive effects, if there have been a history of traumas, so, you know, and if there is PTSD, what are those symptoms? So a basic, you know, trauma assessment of the trauma and or and past traumas for, of the child. And then in terms of looking at the specific child trauma sy symptoms, you're looking at cognitive functioning um, in terms of any, you know, unhelpful beliefs that may be um, developed. Relational functioning, are they able to still connect with others in a normal way, peers, parents, teachers? Affective functioning, are they able to um, express emotions, identify emotions? Are they being overwhelmed by emotions? Are they numb? Um, so looking at that piece, identifying any family problems that may have been there and or were created because of the trauma. Um, looking at any specific trauma behavior, such as dissociation, hypervigilance, um, flashbacks, typical PTSD-type symptoms, and then also looking for somatic symptoms. Are there any, you know, stomach problems, um, asthma? You can have strange things, you know, somatic symptoms that may have arisen since the trauma. And then they also look at and assess the child functioning prior to the trauma and what was, the, you know, what strengths do the child have and interests or, you know, what are the resources that both the child and the family may have and what was their functioning like prior to this. And then another unique piece of this uh, case conceptualization is what they call the baseline narrative. And this is where they just get a sense of, because if you remember the signature um, tr intervention is the trauma narrative and so at the beginning part of the um, intake and case conceptualization what you need to do is uh, get what they call the baseline narrative and first they have the child uh, talk about a positive thing something very fun that happened recently and you go through and have them you know tell the story of what happened you know maybe they got to go to Disneyland and you know how that went you know uh, you look at you know how they put the, how much of the story they can put together then you do ask follow-up questions about what thoughts did they have what were their feelings were there sensations and so you, you ask you know some follow-up questions to help them flesh out the narrative and then you move on to asking them about the trauma specifically and you may prompt them you know what happened on the day you know when your mother didn't come home or whatever it was um and you have them then tell the story and that's your baseline trauma narrative of what they're able to remember. You do go through and ask them the same follow-up questions like what thoughts, you know, were going through your head during this, what feelings, what sensations, etc. And so you do this as part of the initial assessment. And then finally you look at parental functioning. How are the parents functioning? Because, you know, um, when your child's been traumatized, often um, the parents are in a very distressed, possibly traumatized themselves. They may have... Um, be experiencing a grief reaction also. Um, so there's a lot that might be going on that needs to be assessed in terms of parental functioning when working with traumatized children. And so going through all of this would be the, um, the how the therapist kind of initially conceptualizes and gets the, the, um, the case and, and under, you know, so this is the basic assessment here. So next we're going to move on to talking about goal setting. Uh, and as a manualized approach it does have some very clear goals and again because it is targeting a very specific population it's easy to have more structured goals. So the basic goals are to optimize adaptive functioning and to create increase the child's self-efficacy um, in all areas of life cognitive, emotional, um, relational, behavioral and so basically you're helping the child resume um, normal functioning 
And actually, trauma is quite treatable. It can be very, very difficult and painful in terms of the treatment and going through the treatment, um, but it is very treatable, so it's very realistic to have an expectation that the child return to normal functioning. And that is the overarching goal of this approach. So now we're going to look at some of the interventions in trauma-focused CBT. So um, there are several kind of structured interventions that are in uh, trauma-focused CBT, and actually the whole uh, you know, formal manualized treatment is organized around these interventions. So the first is psychoeducation, psychoeducation about trauma, psychoeducation psychoeducation about trauma-focused CBT. And I think this is one of the most powerful things a, a, um, a therapist can do, especially for the parents and caretakers. Um, it can be such a huge relief for parents to hear about um, the fact that trauma is very treatable, their child can resume normal functioning, it's, and, and so I, I think that's often a very powerful thing that therapists can do for parents in the very first session. And there's also psychoeducation about how this process is going to work. Um, and so this is also, you know, a very important piece of the process. There's parent skills training. Um, parenting a traumatized child is uh, difficult. Parenting a regular child is difficult. So parenting a traumatized child is, is very difficult. And so they, they help parents figure out, you know, how to navigate this. They'll look at how their parenting was before look at what the problems are and help them and develop parenting techniques that are appropriate. Because just because a child is traumatized, it doesn't mean they, you know, it's you can let them get away with defiant and oppositional or, you know, problematic behaviors at home. So the parents still need to figure out how to parent and support the child, as well as being very supportive and nurturing and figuring out how to relate to their child who's been traumatized. And so this is often very a huge relief for parents. They teach relaxation techniques to the kids to help them learn how to calm themselves, relax themselves when they begin to feel anxious, um, which is very typical after trauma. So they have uh, several of these that they teach the kids. They talk about, they also help the kids with affect ex expression and modulation. And so, you know, depending on the developmental ability, but helping the children learn how to identify feelings and express feelings and regulate those emotions. And they give them, you know, various typical CBT techniques for doing that. They also do a lot of work with what they call the cognitive triangle, which is a triangle between thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and use this to help them um, with cognitive coping and you know looking at how their thoughts and feelings are you know affecting their behavior, such as a tantrum, um, and what are other ways to work with this triangle so that they. Um, maybe, you know, don't need to act out, that they can honor those thoughts and those feelings that they have been acting out. Then the trauma narrative, um, which we discussed in the juice, the significant, um, it is a, you know, a major working through of the trauma um, itself typically involves, you know, telling that narrative in some form, such as a book that has both pictures that the child draws typically and uh, a written narrative, a storyline of what is happening. And this is one that the therapist and the child will again co-create co over several sessions and go back and add pieces because typically um, new memories will kind of come back and they start putting it all together. Um, part of the trauma narrative though is also going through and then looking and cognitively challenging any un unhelpful beliefs that may have developed through the process of the trauma. Then if there are um, still symptoms, um, such as um, fears that have arisen or phobias um, or just high anxiety, hypervigilance, they do in vivo math, they use in vivo techniques to help the child develop mastery over certain uh, situations and contexts, whatever that might be. Um, then there are, there are parent-child conjoint sessions to help them um, communicate regarding the trauma as well as, in this last phase, enhancing the future safety and development. So there are, lists, so there are techniques for helping identify how to prevent future traumas and how to ensure you know, healthy development going forward. And obviously that's more towards the end, typically, of therapy. So now we're going to talk a little bit about research and the evidence base. So 
Trauma-focused CBT is an evidence-based treatment, and many would consider it the most effective. I guess that's always argu arguable in the world of uh, research and um, psychotherapy, but certainly one of the most effective treatments for treating childhood trauma. And it has been widely disseminated uh, through, I mean, it was, you know, uh, many clinical trials have been tested through the National Institutes of Mental Health, and they do have the 10-hour uh, module that introduces, uh, does a beautiful job introducing how this would work. And in addition, many county and government agencies have adopted this um, because it is brief, because um, it, it has, has clinical trials that show that it's very effective in treating childhood trauma, which if untreated, it you know often becomes um, much more difficult to treat. And so it is uh, something that you will see very, very widely used in any agency or county, non-profit and county settings use this very wide, widely. And of course, you can get more advanced training than the 10-hour training online. But because it's free and available to everyone, I strongly recommend um, that you check that out. And then finally, I want to wrap up by talking about uh, using trauma-focused therapy with, with um, diverse clients. So trauma-focused therapy has um, been used with diverse uh, populations. There are specific approach and adaptations for working with uh, Latino children and their families. And in addition, there has been a specific, some specific work and suggestions for working with um, Native American and Alaskan Indian children using um, some of their Native uh, spiritual traditions, kind of integrating that into the whole process of uh, treating the trauma. So there have been some specific approaches for working with specific populations and it has shown to be effective um, with these populations. So I did not find any research on using trauma-focused CBT specifically with LGBTQ, but um, I would not think that there are any counterindications. And in fact, for many children who um, identify or teens as LGBTQ, Trauma would certainly um, be part of that experience, even without other um, forms of trauma, and um, so certainly could be used, and more work needs to be done in that area. Well, I hope you have found this to be a useful introduction to trauma-focused uh, CBT. I invite you to uh, read in more depth, um, both in my textbook as well as, um, as I referred you to the online um, modules as well as uh, you know additional readings in trauma focused CBT.